Hey y'all. Uh, I finally uploaded that other video and there's still a little light left so I thought I'd make uh, a Mediterranean salad for my vegan challenge. And looking at my computer, I can see that I forgot to put my teeth in. Now I told you I might forget sometime and this is it. So it's this is the natural me. And there is Petra behind my computer wanting to get up here. Shoo, shoo. My goodness. Okay. I'm making this Mediterranean salad, and I'm just going to use what I have on hand. Uh, I would normally put uh, cherry tomatoes and fresh cucumber in there, but I don't have any. So I'm just going to use what I have. It'll still taste good. but And uh, I normally put feta cheese in there but because I want it to be vegan I'm going to not put any any cheese in there so I'll just uh, start working on it and, uh, maybe I can give you some commentary I don't know uh, I get kind of zoned out when I'm cooking so we'll see how it goes <clears throat> okay I start with a can of Canelli beans. And I got my dryer going. I probably need to turn it off. Okay, where is my sister? Okay, <clears throat> I want to rinse rinse my beans I don't want that the thickness that's in there I don't have fresh tomatoes I'm going to open up a can of no salt diced tomatoes I have to watch my salt intake so I, if I can buy canned food that doesn't have salt that's what I get Make myself a little trash bag. My, my trash is full, so. Okay. Let me rinse that sister. Because it's certainly easier to clean it when you do it right away instead of waiting until whatever's on there gets hard. Okay. in this can of tomatoes and I have a jar of artichoke hearts let's see if I can get this open there we go And I like to save these little jars. I try not to save too many of them, but uh, they're great for when you have a large jar of olives or pickles or something. You get down to the end of the jar, and it's hard to get the stuff out of there. You put them in a little jar. I like to do that. Okay, let's see. Okay, I got some uh, uh, Aunt Nellie's pickled beets. They're sliced. Just gonna drain the liquid off there. And just use what was left. Looks like maybe a fourth of a cup. I'm gonna rinse that only because beet juice stains so bad. 
All right, and I got got a few Kalamati olives. Drain those. Just a little handful. And I got a few few green olives here. Drain those. Add those. Alright. And now what's left is I got some celery and uh, onion. So I will put some of that in there. Okay. And because most of the time I don't wear my dentures, something like celery or cucumbers. I'll, I'll dice them real small. It's easier for me to eat. There's a lot of things I miss out on having dentures. Nuts. I mean, I could grind them up and put them in something, but I ended, I ended up giving all my nuts to my oldest daughter. So instead of eating nuts, I eat uh, chia seeds every day i add them well, i might make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich i'll sprinkle chia seeds on there or if i have a you know uh, like a turkey and cheese sandwich i'll sprinkle chia seeds on there um sprinkle it in my yogurt and i tried the uh chia pudding you know making chia pudding but I thought, oh, that's too much, too much work. I'll just add some to my uh, yogurt that I eat. And it's much simpler. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to make this very small. So if I, if I try and chew it and can't, I can just swallow it. I know that sounds terrible, but, you know, that's just what you live with can't have everything you want and you just make do with what you have and you know there's a lot of times when I leave the house to go to the grocery store or I've been to the doctor's office all kinds of places and I forget to put my teeth in and so I, and I don't get embarrassed about it because well it's just me and you know, people don't like it, well, tough luck, you know, but I, I, I had a loved one who, who paid for my dentures, and when I see them, I try to wear them then to let them know that I appreciate the fact that they did, you know, get my dentures for me, but, uh, but I've learned to eat most foods with without having dentures. It'll be, I think, two years this July when I got my dentures. And that was quite an adventure. I, I was going to have to have uh, uh, aortic valve replacement. And, uh, you know, when you have, you know, major procedures like that, you always have to go to your dentist and have your teeth checked so they told me i needed to have all my teeth removed so on my birthday last year i had 21 teeth removed and it wasn't i wouldn't say real painful i mean they numb you up and you know do all that stuff but uh it's the idea of them pulling your teeth you know you come into this world with your teeth and you kind of expect to go out of this world 
with your teeth. So that won't be happening with me. But uh, I stayed with my mother-in-law while I had this teeth pulling done. And uh, it was pretty gross. I, I had been taking uh, low-dose aspirin for a long time. And uh, they didn't tell me I needed to stop taking the low-dose aspirin. So, of course, naturally, what, what would happen? You'd get all your teeth pulled. And I bled for about 24 hours. And it was gross. It was... It, it really was gross. And uh, it was like... Uh, excuse me for being so graphic, but, you know, if you're going to go through something like this, you might want to know. Um, because I was bleeding so much, uh, there were lots of, uh, I guess, clots coming out. And and they looked like, it looked like I was spitting up jello or something. It, it was just terrible. Just terrible. And, you know, I'd fall asleep and, you know, I tend to sleep with my mouth open. Of course, that's not good. And, oh, it just made a mess. But I survived. And uh, so, you know, I guess I'm not so vain that I'm worried about people looking at me and saying, Oh, oh, gross. You, you, look, you look gross. Well, I don't feel that way. I just, I just ignore it. Uh, you know, like my daddy said, if somebody's bothered by something or angry about something, that's their problem, not yours. So that's kind of how I how I see it. Now, I've chopped that celery up real small, diced it, I guess. I don't know if you can see. Very small to add a little crunch. And I really like having cucumber in this it, it gives it a oh, kind of a fresh fresh taste you know uh, now I'll put a little onion in there oh, let me leave the root on there because I'm not going to use all of this it's part of it. and I like to buy sweet onions you know they come from you know, like Valdea onions or the sweet onions from Texas or you get those uh, onions from Peru because the other onions are too, too strong. Okay. Yeah, I don't use a, a, a what you call it, a cutting board. I, I do everything with my, just cutting it in my hand. So I can say, I, I'm not a professional, so it's okay. <laughs> and I'm going to slice this onion real thin. And But this, this uh, Mediterranean salad is a, it's nice to have it on hand. You, I've, I've made a, you know, a bowl or pan of this, and it's lasted me three or four days. It's filling, it's satisfying, and, uh, you know, if you have somebody else in the household with you and they don't really like the things that go in here, oh, well, that's fine because you know it'll keep. It won't. It won't go bad too quick. And so you can always have it, you know, for lunch or dinner, snacks. I reckon you could even have it for breakfast. I think you can have most, I think you can have most anything for breakfast. Uh, I remember when I was in high school, my daddy wanted to make sure I got something to eat before I went to school. And I'd have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and catch the bus about 6.15. And I can tell you, I was not in the mood for eating breakfast. 
but Daddy tried all kinds of things. My my mother worked third shift at the hospital as a nurse's aide, so Daddy would you know get us get us up and ready for school. And uh, when I was in high school, Daddy would you know he cooked sausage and uh, eggs and and all that stuff. And oh, it just the thought of it just made me sick. And and sometimes he would make me a piece of toast and scrambled egg and sausage and we always had grape jelly growing up it was always grape jelly and when you mix yellow eggs with grape jelly they turn green and believe me that's not appetizing either so he daddy figured well i'll try something else he would make me stuffed eggs for breakfast do anything to get me to eat. And I was telling my brother about it, and he said, yeah, he used to make me tuna fish for breakfast. So, you know, Daddy was, didn't matter to him, uh, you know, what what food you were going to eat, just as long as you ate something. So I kind of always had that attitude about breakfast. It, it doesn't have to be bacon and eggs or a muffin or you know, whatever you would normally eat for breakfast. So, I tell you, one of my very favorite things to have for breakfast is black-eyed peas and cornbread. It is, it is very satisfying. Let's see, I'm going to put in a little uh, pepper. And I'm not going to put salt in this because there's... You know, salt in the beans, there's salt in the olives. Uh, I imagine the, uh, let me see here, Aunt Nellie's, let's see what the sodium is in here. 60 milligrams for a serving, which is four slices. So yeah, here. sodium in there. Uh, so I, I, I don't need to add any salt. <laughs> Now I'm going to add a little balsamic vinegar. And a little olive oil. And some dried parsley. I looked up dried parsley, the nutritional value of it. And it has a lot of micronutrients in there. And I thought, well, I can add that to my my diet. I, I sprinkled that on my sandwich or in soups. Or I've made, uh, I cook my rice. I like to eat brown rice. And uh, I'll, I'll sprinkle some uh, parsley in there. I call it parsley rice. Okay. Now. You know, I'll probably need to cut up those uh, artichoke hearts because I'm not going to be able to. I'm not going to be able to munch down on them. They'll be too tough for me to eat. So I'll try to break them up as much as I can. Slice them small, the end of it. Um. But I imagine you could put, you know, you got a garden and you got a uh, a good crop of uh, yellow squash. You could dice that yellow squash up and put in here. You know, you can eat it raw. That would be good. It'd be colorful. be pretty. slices and I'm kind of like getting my hands when I'm cooking I like to get my hands in there slice up some stuff 
my husband used to get aggravated with me. I'd, I'd cook something. He'd say, oh, that's really great, you know. And I'd cook it again. And he'd say, what's different? He finally caught on that I, I was not good at using recipes. I mean, occasionally I will. You know, like when you're baking or something like that. But I just kind of like throwing things together. And his personality was... You know, you got to make it the same every time and all that. And he would, I liked, I like to have my onions and bell peppers and stuff like that. I, I like those to be in big chunks like when I made spaghetti sauce. And uh, he said, oh no, you need to dice them up. They need to be small. And I thought, well, who says? I mean, you know, cooking is a, cooking is a, personal preference you know all those cooks on tv telling you how to cook this and that i mean you can listen to them and learn lots of things but when it comes right down to it you know what you like you know what your family likes so you know why do you have to succumb to you know what what the professional cooks say and you know everybody's got the perfect the perfect egg recipe well i always cook my eggs kind of dry and then when my daughter moved in here uh after her home was flooded <laughs> i was cooking eggs and she said can you can you leave them moist i said sure and i did Come to find out, they taste really good, moist. So when I cook my eggs now, they're they're a little more moist than I would normally make them, and uh, I, I think that's a personal preference. When I made fried eggs for my husband, he wanted them sunny side up. He wanted just a little loose, you know, the yolk, and. He didn't want any brown on there. And I I, I learned to cook them that way, you know. Um, so, you know, I, I understand professional cooks. And they learn a certain way. And they're giving you good ideas and techniques to cook your food. But it, when it comes to, you know, you like your eggs done really hard and you like that brown crispy part of it or you don't like that crispy part of it you want them to be soft all the way around that's a personal preference so you know i guess i don't like being told what to do you know not not too good about that all right let me put this up and this little dish right here, when I was in the seventh grade, it's a Pyrex. When I was in the seventh grade, I was downstairs in our basement. It was open at the time. It was just a, you know, a dirt floor and open to the, open to the weather. And uh, there were a few things down there. There were some dishes, and. Uh, and I came up and asked my mother, I said, uh, who do those dishes belong to? And uh, they belong to uh, an aunt and uncle of mine. And uh, I said, oh, well, I wonder if I could have them. So I contacted my aunt and uncle. And they said, oh, yeah, you can have them. And so I've had this dish ever since. Uh... I cook lots of, lots of things in here. Uh, I usually use it for when I cook uh, old-fashioned lemon pudding cake. That's what I use it for. Okay, now that is ready. So I'll have something to eat that's ready. So... Mediterranean salad.
vegan style. All right. Well, thank y'all for watching. Sorry I didn't put my teeth in, but I don't feel real sorry about it, you know. Mm. Okay, well, I don't know when I'll post this. The video I did previous to this took about three hours. So, I'm just at the mercy of the local internet service. So, y'all have a good evening or day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.